The Minister will take questions at the end of his statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Kevin Stewart, up to 10 minutes, Minister. Um, thank you very much, President Officer. And I want to start by making my and the Scottish Government's position on this matter clear. It is completely unacceptable that people with learning disabilities and more complex needs spend any longer in hospital than medically necessary. For every day spent in hospital, that person loses part of their connection with their community, their family and their friends. Everyone has the right to a home and an independent life. Scotland is not protecting the rights of people with learning disabilities and complex needs if we have to keep people in hospital when they should be living at home or in a homely environment with the right support. This is an absolute priority for me and it is why I am pleased to have this opportunity today to update Parliament on the action uh, that the Scottish Government is taking to make change. Members may already be aware that earlier this month I welcomed the publication of the Coming Home Implementation Report drafted by the working group established by the Scottish Government to look into the issues of delayed discharge and out-of-area placements of people with complex needs. It sets out a clear vision that by March 2024, out-of-area residential placements and inappropriate hospital stays should be, should be greatly reduced. Ultimately, uh, we want to be in a position where out-of-area residential placements are only made through individual or family choices, and people are only in hospital for as long as they require assessment and treatment. This report sets out a number of key recommendations, which I, I, I will ensure are taken forward at speed. Implementing these recommendations is an essential next step in improving the care and support that people with learning disabilities receive in Scotland. The report highlighted that one of the biggest challenges is around visibility and accountability. Too often, people end up hidden in the current reporting and coding system, and I want to ensure that people are visible within the data and move to an appro approach where we use data to drive person-centred responses. The Government will work with experts in this field, including individuals with lived experience, clinicians, social workers, commissioners and providers, to develop and establish a national register for people who are either a, currently admitted to hospital-based assessment and treatment units, or living in an unsuitable or inappropriate out-of-area placement, or are at risk of a placement breakdown. This register will highlight to local and national government those individuals who need dedicated and focused attention to ensure they are receiving support which works for them. The register will both improve monitoring at a local level and nationally, and support local areas to effectively measure their own progress on reducing delayed discharges and out-of-area placements. Improved data will also provide a rich intelligence about how we can continue to work to improve people's lives and best meet people's needs. This is something that countries internationally struggle to get right, and I want Scotland to lead the way on providing suitable and appropriate care in the community for people with complex care needs. The Register will be supported with new bespoke guidance written collaboratively with professionals and experts specialising in complex care to ensure local areas have the right information and guidance to help uh, in these complex cases. The guidance will ensure we have a consistent approach across Scotland to end the postcode lottery of provision. It will also ensure that the register remains dynamic, regularly updated to provide live information on people's current circumstances so that services can respond rapidly and effectively. Uh, and this will provide the basis for a new national standard to make sure that everyone across Scotland is treated fairly and equally. To further support swift and effective action, a national support panel will bring sector ex expertise together to provide an open collaborative forum that can troubleshoot individual cases in partnership with local areas. The panel will assess progress against the register and identify those most at need of bespoke interventions, discussing cases directly with the staff involved to provide advice and support to progress action to return the individual home. 
The expertise available via the panel will, for example, help to pool resources across local areas, share existing good practice and solutions, and provide additional advice about staffing, training and suitable providers. Finally, a national peer support network will sit alongside this work to support to local areas in planning and delivery of services for individuals with particularly complex care needs. This network of sector experts from commissioning, clinical provider and lived experience backgrounds will also be available to offer support and advice in an informal way to any areas, areas looking for additional help and guidance. This is in the spirit of building upon best practice and allowing space for innovative and bespoke solutions to be explored and created. To deliver on the recommendations set out in the report, we know that success will require a high level of collaborative and partnership working. Indeed, I am already aware that colleagues and partner organisations like the Mental Welfare Commission share my ambition to see delayed discharge and out-of-area placements tackled as a matter of priority. Delivering the recommendations in this report will accelerate the momentum towards making meaningful change in the way we care for people with complex care needs. We are starting, I would say, President Officer, from a strong position, as there is a strong desire within the sector to work collaboratively and to see progress on this issue. Enable Scotland and the Scottish Commission for People with Learning Disabilities have both welcomed the publication of this report, with Enable calling this a landmark moment for the human rights of people who have a learning disability in Scotland. Uh, while this details the next steps the Scottish Government will be taking, this builds on action already underway to address the issue of inappropriate out-of-area placements and delayed discharge of people with complex needs. And I'd like to highlight some of this now. Uh, in 2021, the Government provided an additional £20 million to integration authorities across Scotland when we distributed the new Community Living Change Fund. And this money is available to integration authorities for use now, and I expect that integration authorities are utilising this spend to drive the redesign of services for people with learning disabilities and complex care needs now, in the here and now. We must not be complacent about the urgent needs to provide appropriate local care and services for all individuals. This is com complemented by our wider package of dedicated work to address the inequalities faced by autistic people and people with learning disabilities. In March 2021, the Government published our Learning Disabilities and Autism Towards Transformation Plan. And this plan looks at the actions needed to sh shape support services and attitudes across the whole life to ensure that the human rights of aut autistic people and people with learning disabilities are respected, protected and empowered uh, so that they can live their lives the same as everyone else. Members may already be aware of the Scottish Government's commitment to introduce the Learning Disability Autism and Neurodiversity Bill to this Parliament to strengthen and uphold rights. Uh, and this will include provision for a Learning Disabilities, Autism and Neurodiversity Commissioner an independent advocate to ensure that people can secure the protection of these rights. Members will also be aware of our commitment to bring a new Human Rights Bill to Parliament as part of taking forward the 30 progressive, bold and ambitious recommendations from the National Task Force for Human Rights Leadership. This bill will provide a new human rights framework for Scotland, incorporating as far as possible within devolved competence four UN human rights treaties into Scots law, including the International Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. I expect these measures to, be deli to deliver improved community-based support for people with co complex care needs and a significant reduction on delayed discharge and out-of-area placements by March 2024. I am confident that members will support these actions across the floor as we work collectively to ensure people with complex care needs are being cared for appropriately right across Scotland. I commit here and now uh, to update members on progress with this important issue and the immediate measures that we are taking forward uh, to provide the additional tools, uh, the new guidance and the support uh, and help to local areas so that they can implement the best solutions possible lo locally to ensure that we do our level best for people right across our country. Thank you, President Officer.
Thank you. The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we will move on to the next item of business. I would be grateful if members who wish to ask a question were to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call Sandesh Gulhani. Thank you, Presiding Officer. In 2015, the former Health Secretary Shona Robinson said the Scottish Government would eradicate del delayed discharge in a year. Now, seven years later, the Scottish Government is creating a register whilst patients have been suffering. As a junior doctor, I had a patient suffer for eight months whilst waiting in hospital to be moved due to complex needs, and he suffered multiple hospital-acquired infections and was distraught because he couldn't sleep in the hospital environment. Either the Scottish Government for seven years do not know the extent of the problem, or the Scottish Government has ignored the problem, which is worse. How confident is the Minister that the register will be in place by March 2024 and cases greatly reduced? Why has there been a shift in ambition from eradicate delayed discharge to greatly reduce? And does this mean the Scottish Government accept they are unable to deal with the problem? Minister. Um, thank you, President Officer. Uh, the Scottish Government uh, and COSLA jointly recognise um, that we need progress in this area, and uh, that's why we have agreed to take forward the action, actions highlighted uh, in this report uh, at pace. Um, I think that um, uh, Mr Gohani is right to point out uh, that in some regards, over the piece, uh, when it comes to learning disabilities, uh, we have not got this right. Um, and that's one of the reasons why um, we will bring forward all of the recommendations of this report at pace, as I have said, uh, and beyond that, uh, we will eradicate the postcode lotteries that exist um, in certain parts of the country um, through our plans, uh, not only in terms of uh, making sure that these recommendations are implemented, but through our plans for the National Care Service, uh, which aims to eradicate uh, postcode lotteries and bring in um, high quality uh, care standards for all uh, across the board. It is absolutely essential um, that we get it right uh, for people uh, with learning disabilities, uh, autism and people who are neurodiverse. Um, as I have said, I am more than happy to work uh, across this parliament to get this right. Um, I know that uh, Mr O'Kane, who uh, uh, is on the Labour front bench at the moment, is the new co-convener of the cross-party group in learning disabilities, uh, and I'm more than willing to engage uh, and collaborate with groups right across Parliament uh, in order that we are, do our best um, for people across the country. Paul Keane. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I thank the Minister for advanced sight of the statement, and can I agree that it is completely unacceptable that people who have learning disabilities and complex needs are still being forced to live far away from home or are stuck in hospital. Indeed, it has been described by people who have learning disabilities and their families as a human rights scandal. And action has been too slow, and the situation has worsened. And I want to pay tribute to the campaigning of organisations such as Enable Scotland and the Scottish Commission for Learning Disability in campaigning on these issues for many years, and indeed for most recently launching My Own Front Door, the campaign that has called for delivery on five key actions. I know that the Minister has announced the recommendations will be taken forward to deliver a national register, national support panel and specialist peer network, but my own front door has also called for the closure of assessment and treatment units um, and the end of the practice of Scottish citizens being sent out of the country and indeed the immediate implementation of a community first principle for support of adults and children who have a learning disability in Scotland, ending the commissioning of multi-bed units. So how does the Minister intend to make swift progress in these areas which the campaign has called for by next year, rather than the 2024 timescale he has set out? And specific, specifically on delayed discharge, we know that over 120,000 bed days were occupied in 2020-21 due to Code 9 reasons. That works out at 34 per cent of all bed days occupied. Many of these people died whilst in hospital and not in their own community. So what direct and swift action will be taken to ensure that people who have learning disabilities can live in their communities with those they love, where they have every right to be? Minister. Um, thank you very much, President Officer. And there was a lot in there, and I may not be able to cover it all in the short period of time. But what I don't cover, um, I will certainly write to uh, Mr O'Kane uh, about. Um, first of all, he asked about assessment and treatment units. Um, and I know that some have called for a moratorium in their use, um, and I fully agree that these uh, places should not be 
um, a, a place where folk with learning disabilities have long stays. Um, but um, they have a, a use in terms of short-term placements for assessment um, and uh, for treatment where appropriate. And I think that we should recognise that, but also fully recognise that these are not places that people should be living in um, for a long period of time. Uh, I recognise um, Mr uh, O'Kane's uh, call for swifter action and a greater timescale. I think we have to be realistic here. Uh, in terms of getting this absolutely right. I want to move at pace, but I also do not want to set any targets that are unachievable, um, and uh, I th am sure um, that folk feel likewise. But I want to see change and quick change. Uh, but I also have to persuade other partners uh, that that change is required to happen at pace. I want to see the investment that we have put in uh, utilised quickly. Um, and I want to see the right places um, for people established um, right across the country. Um, he talked about multi-bed units. Um, I have to say that um, having seen from one integrated uh, authority uh, the use of the language of, of multi-bed unit, I, I, do not, I do not want to see that again. What we must be doing is providing folks with homes. Now, that may be um, homes, shared homes, uh, where that is appropriate uh, and where, that, where people and their families want that. Um, and I'm quite sure that many of us in the Chamber could give examples of where that works. We must get away um, from this institutionalisation and the institutional language that is used still by a small minority of people in the country, but that is unacceptable, and we will do our best to make sure that that culture changes dramatically over the next period of time, President Officer. Thank you. There's a lot of interest in this statement, and I'd be grateful if we could shorten questions and responses. And I call Emma Harper to be followed by Craig Hoy. Thank you, President Officer. The Minister touched on the Community Living Change Fund. Can the Minister expand on what steps will be taken to ensure best practice is adhered to in the design of community-based support for people with complex needs, so that we can end the postcode lottery for access to high-quality services, particularly across rural areas such as the Fries and Galloway, but more widely across Scotland as well? Minister. Um, President Officer, there is best practice out there. Um, and we must ensure that that best practice is exported. And I'm not convinced at the moment that that is happening uh, to the degree that it should be. And uh, Emma Harper is right to talk about um, postcode lotteries, because in many places uh, we do see uh, person-centred services that work well for people, their families and for the communities um, uh, that these are taking place in, not so much in others. So um, I would say to Emma Harper, in terms of our mission here uh, to move forward, we must ensure that that best practice um, is in place. The guidance and the standards that we set um, should uh, help eradicate postcode lotteries so that we are doing our best for everyone, no matter where they stay um, in Scotland. Craig Hoy, to be followed by Gillian Martin. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Today's statement confirms that since 2018, the Government has failed to make meaningful progress towards properly supporting those with learning disabilities to live independently in their communities. And I listened closely to what the Minister just said to Mr O'Kane, but will he now look seriously at calls for an end to the construction of further multi-bed units for those with learning disabilities? And does he agree with Enable Scotland? And I heard what he said, that these, solutions, that these uh, are sadly no longer part of the solution but could now be perpetuating the problem in many instances. Minister. Well, well let me make it quite clear, um, if I didn't make it clear enough in my answer um, to Paul O'Kane. Um, you know, I do not want any of the money that we are, being, we are investing um, put into multi-bed units. I don't want the use of the terminology multi-bed units. What we should be doing is creating homes for people. And we will lay this out very clearly in the guidance. Now, um, there are homes out there, and I've said this already, um, where uh, a number of tenants are in those homes. 
uh, residents that are quite happy uh, with those homes and the support that's provided there. I would not class them as multi-bed units, and I hope that nobody else would, because they are homes. Uh, but anyone who thinks that you know, they can go back to the same old, uh, that will not be happening, and that will be spelled out very, very clearly in the guidance. Julian Martin to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Thank you, President Officer. One of the visions of the coming home implementation is that all adults with complex needs have choice and control over the care and support they receive. And as the new adult disability payment rolls out this week, can the Minister uh, tell us what effect will foresee on that ability of adults with complex needs to have that choice and control? And, and when we're talking about uh, making this person centred, we've also got the census. What support has been given to people with complex needs to actually um, access the, the census, and why is it important that they do, do so? Minister. Um, President officer, I will have to write to Ms Martin uh, around about the census aspect of her question, um, and I, I, will, I, I will do so. I do not have the detail of that to hand. Um, I, I think that uh, the adult disability payment um, is designed as, uh, uh, to make things as straightforward as possible. Um, and uh, in, uh, uh, in all of that, uh, we will always start in a, from a position of trust when it comes to the adult disability payment. And of course, it will have dignity, fairness and respect at its heart. Uh, but it's not just the adult disability payment um, in terms of getting it right in terms of income and support um, for folks with a learning disability. Um, we also uh, should ensure um, that folks are able to access um, self-directed support um, when that is uh, required. Um, and at this moment in time, uh, we are updating the guidance on self-directed support uh, to make it easier for folks to access um, that support. Um, often that has been uh, difficult again in some parts of the country. Uh, we are doing our level best to ensure that that guidance uh, is clear and the maximum amount, amount of people uh, can access that support too. Jackie Bailey to be followed by Jackie Dunbar. Presiding officer, ending out of area placements was a priority in 2016, six years ago. The Coming Home report was then published in 2018. It is disappointing that after all these years, there has been so little improvement in out-of-area placements. For the past six years, I've been trying to help families in Helensborough and Lomond have their loved ones living closer to home, not hundreds of miles away. The key constraint has been a lack of suitable supported accommodation. There is not one single mention of housing in the Minister's statement. So can the Minister tell me what specific action will be taken and when to improve the provision of supported accommodation in local authority areas so that the practice of out-of-area placements can finally end. Minister. Um, President officer, um, uh, I would say to uh, Ms Bailey um, that uh, the £20 million of support should be helpful to uh, uh, integration authorities um, to uh, make sure that the right housing is put in place. That £20 million alone uh, should also be backed by uh, the substantial amounts of money that local authorities have um, through the resource planning assumptions uh, for um, the uh, uh, housing uh, uh, programme that the government has. I have had regular discussions with Shona Robeson from, since taking over this post, and as Ms Bailey knows, I have uh, quite an interest in housing. And I have to say um, that local authorities um, should be using uh, their strategic housing investment plans and their housing needs and demand assessments to look carefully at what is required in their area uh, and to lever in the investment that is needed to bring back folk to their places. Um, I should say to the Chamber, uh, President Officer, um, you know, when I was in administration um, in Aberdeen City, we made a major effort uh, and some real gains in bringing ho folk home from out of authority placements. That was in the days before uh, there was the amount of housing money that is available now. This is not beyond the wit of anyone. Um, what we need to do is make sure that folk work in tandem to get this right for people right across our country. Jackie Dunbar to be followed by Alex Cole-Hamilton. 
Thank you, President Officer. One of the main barriers outlined in the report is a lack of visibility of the population of people with learning disabilities. Can the Minister set out how the lived experience of complex care needs, including individuals and their families, will factor into the creation of a new national care service? Minister. Um, thank you very much, President Officer. And, uh, uh, Ms Dunbar, um, recognises that in everything that uh, we do in terms of uh, this work and the formation of the National Care Service, we have to ensure that the voices of lived experiences, uh, experience are at the very heart um, of all of this. Um, many of uh, the stakeholders that uh, uh, we're talking about today um, are the people and the people they, that represent them were involved uh, in the review conducted by uh, Derek Feely um, and, of course, the consultation since then. Uh, and this includes the likes of PAMIS, Enable uh, and others. And we're continuing to ma maintain all of those links um, as we uh, ensure that NCS uh, moves forward. Uh, we have to ensure that uh, those folks with complex needs uh, that their voices are heard, the voices of their families, the voices of their carers, uh, and we will ensure close collaboration uh, as we move forward, as we co-design the National Care Service. Alex Cole Hamilton to be followed by Fergus Ewing. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Can I commend Enable Scotland's efforts to highlight the cases of people who have lived in hospital for years or been offered care placement miles and miles from home? The Scottish Government is now promising, quote, a significant reduction on delayed discharge and out-of-area placements by March 2024. But it has been declaring this as a priority for years. So let me get this straight. The new plan is to continue routinely breaching people's rights for yet another two years. Why is it taking the Scottish Government so long to make these critical changes? Minister. Um, as I've said, and I've made no bones about it today, um, uh, President Officer, um, it's not good enough, and this has per persisted for too long. Uh, but we are going to build on the recommendations of the working group, which has uh, put in a lot of work. Uh, and beyond that, um, you know, are going to improve data through the register, uh, which will allow us to track uh, much more what is happening to people. Um, and that will give us the ability uh, to ensure uh, that we take the necessary steps to get this right when we are not um, doing well. That is backed, as I said, by um, the resource that we have put in, £20 million. We will continue to look at that as we move forward. Uh, but the key thing in all of this is that we all need to work together. I do not have all of the levers of power uh, in all of this. Uh, we need to have integration authorities, local authorities um, and others working together to get this right for people. I'm very pleased at the way that COSLA um, has um, uh, interacted with all of this. I think that we are in a better place than we've ever been before. And this, for me, is a priority. Uh, it is a priority to ensure that we uh, get this absolutely right and have a, a past record um, of bringing back folk back from out of authority placements uh, in a council basis. And I want to do that on a national basis. Um, I appreciate the Minister is very keen to give a fulsome, comprehensive response, but we are becoming very tight for time. So I call Fergus Ewing to be followed by Gillian Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, of all the tens of thousands of people who, over the past 22 years, have sought my help in one way or another as constituency MSP, it's my impression that those who face the longest, the most painful and gruelling struggle are parents and families of children who have profound special needs, whether in childhood or adulthood or both. Um, does the Minister recognise that in the Highlands and Islands there are simply not enough specialist facilities to provide appropriate out-of-area uh, uh, out care, uh, and, and that in some cases uh, the children should be referred to specialist facilities out of the area. My concern is that these decisions, whether taken for children by the Council or adults by the NHS, are often the subject of financial pressure, which sometimes is perceived by the parents to trump 
clinical and human considerations. So, will the Minister review the system of finance uh, so that neither councils nor health boards are in the position of declining placements, such placements, uh, for financial reasons, and that that should never happen? Minister. Um, President Officer, uh, Mr Ewing has been very vocal on this issue on a, a number of occasions, and rightly so. I know that he always uh, stands up um, for his constituents. Um, and I think that the National, plan, uh, the national Panel um, uh, has to look at um, the systemic challenge, challenges that exist, the geographical challenges that exist in some cases, and we need to get better at sharing expertise. Um, but beyond that, I think we also, uh, in terms of the guidance, need to lay out um, very clearly what our expectations are. Uh, but we also need to bring about some cultural change here as well. Um, because, um, in some regards, this is about cost, but it's not about money. Because sometimes it costs a hell of a lot to put um, folk uh, into and out of authority placement, and it's not right. Um, but the human cost um, sometimes of doing that is great. Um, and I think that we have got to ensure that when folks are taking decisions, um, it's not the short-term financial cost that is looked at, it is the human cost of not getting this right. And I think that sometimes in the past we have made mistakes in terms of, out of authority pla placements. I'll give an example uh, from, uh, when, from my time in Aberdeen. Could you do so folk, very briefly, Minister? Yeah, when folk were sent to Devon and Cornwall, which was not right for the families, uh, not right for the people themselves, uh, and certainly not right for the public purse either. I call Julian Mackay to be followed by Christine Graham. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Coming Home report states that everyone should understand their rights and be fully supported to take part in developing policy and practices which affect their lives. We have heard from families that they are not aware of what rights they had when their loved ones are placed outside of their area. What action is the Scottish Government taking to improve rights awareness amongst people with learning disabilities and complex care needs, their families and carers? Minister. Um, President officer, uh, we need to ensure um, that everybody's human rights are upheld, uh, and we have a job of work to do uh, in terms of ensuring that everybody knows what their rights are. Um, I spoke in the statement around about uh, our plans to embed human rights into legislation, um, and we will do so. Uh, beyond that, um, what I should say is that we need to be uh, much better uh, in terms of advocacy as well, and ensuring that folks have uh, uh, the uh, right to obtain advocacy as we move forward and get the right advice. Um, so more work to do there, but it will be done. Christine Graham, to be followed by Sue Webber. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I will refer also to the report, and I quote, The framework is designed to ensure the needs of people with learning disabilities and their families drive the local commissioning strategy. So for those families in the front line, in plain speak, it sounds quite official language, in plain speak, what does that mean and how will it be achieved? Minister. Um, quite simply, um, uh, in all that we are doing at this moment in terms of social care, I want the voices of lived experience to help shape services um, as we move forward. Um, and in the case of the National Care Service, in terms of the um, uh, proposed community health um, and social care boards, that means that folks with lived experience will sit around the table and have a vote uh, on how things uh, go on. And in this area, um, you know, I've talked to a lot of folks um, uh, since coming into this job with learning disabilities and with their families. Um, they feel that they are not listened to enough. I think that uh, we need to do much more, and we will. Thank you. And Sue Weber. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Minister's statement rightly points out that improved data is needed to quantify and measure work to improve people's lives, especially those with complex needs who are lost and tied up in hospital. And the Register will make some progress towards this, but it is concerning that work has not already been undertaken to join up support and care for these vulnerable individuals. Minister, of those in December who had their release from hospital delayed by three days or more, a quarter could be accounted for by people with complex needs and learning disabilities. Is there not a case for an expedited progress and real action 
rather than more promises. Promises with noble ambitions, but with no instinct for delivery. Minister. Um, I thought I made it quite clear, President Officer, in the statement that I want to move at pace here um, and to get this absolutely right as we move forward um, for all of uh, the folks in our country uh, with a learning disability, uh, for all of their loved ones um, and their carers. Um, and uh, as we move at pace, uh, I am more than willing to come back to Parliament uh, on a regular basis. Uh, to update uh, colleagues on how we are progressing with all of that. Thank you. That concludes the ministerial statement. There will be a short pause before the next item of business.